proposed by McCulloch and Pitts. So these are the names of the scientists. McCulloch and Pitts are the scientist names. So both of them proposed this artificial neural model. So what it is having, it is consisting of input units, input units from 1 to m plus n. So these are the total number of input units and this is having a single output unit. So this is the single output unit. So these are all the input units. These are all the input units. So here the difference is when compared to the earlier one and this one, R. So in the earlier example, we whatever we have considered they are bidirectional. So here the interconnecting links are unidirectional. So only from this from input to output. So only in one direction. So the information will pass. The information will pass. So that is the important thing. So the interconnecting links from input to outputs are unidirectional. And here in the inputs, there are two kinds of inputs. So you can observe the input weights. So the inputs are you can classify into two types. One is excitatory inputs. So this is one type. So the inputs total inputs are classified into two types. One is excitatory inputs. The second one is the inhibitory inputs. So we'll see what these are excited and what are inhibitory inputs. So this is the uh, neural model of the McCulloch Pitts neural model. So it will have the number of input units and one output units and the inputs are classified into two types based on the weights of that interconnection. And the important point is yeah, the interconnecting links are unidirectional. So two types, one is excitatory, the other one is the inhibitor inhibitory right so when we will call it as excitatory input means so the interconnecting weight is if it is positively weighted the weight from the input unit or the from the input units to the output unit if it is positive we will call it as that as the excited so if the weight is negative the ne weight is negative from the input unit to the output unit, then we will call it as inhibitory input. So this this inputs will make the neuron to fire. So this will make the neuron to fire. So whereas this doesn't make the neuron to fire. So these inputs will make the neuron to fire, whereas inhibitory inputs or uh, does not allow the neuron to fire. So always excited every input means they are having the positive weights whereas inhibitory inputs will have negative weights. So another important feature are of its neural model is so all excitatory have the same positive weight will have the same positive weight and all inhibitory our negative weights will have the same value. So that is the another important thing. So all positive weights will have the unique value that is W and all negative uh, weights uh, here we are considering minus V. In the second and the next important uh, feature of this McCulloch Pitts neural model is so the activation function Y out that is equal to function of Y underscore in is binary so the activation function is a binary function activation function is binary function so that means the output is one the output is one if the neuron fires if the neuron fires the output is one or zero in case if the neuron doesn't fire so that is why we are calling as the activation function as binary function so the output is having only two values either one or zero. So the output is one if the neuron fires or the output is zero simply if the neuron doesn't fire. So the activation function is binary function, right? And the next one is the activation function as I have said is binary step function. 
So here we are whatever threshold we will consider a threshold value. So whatever may be the threshold value, if the net input, the net input to the output unit, the net unit, net input to the output unit, if it is greater than the threshold value, if y underscore in is greater than the threshold value, then the output is one. Output is one or the neuron fires. So otherwise, if y underscore in the net input to the output unit, if it is less than the threshold, the neuron doesn't fire and the output is zero. The activation function is we have considered binary step. So when this output is one means the net input to the output unit, the net input to the output unit is greater than the threshold value. So whatever will be the threshold. So whatever we are considering, that will be the threshold. So if it is greater than uh, the net input, if it is greater than the threshold, then the output is one. Otherwise, if the net input to the output unit is less than the threshold value, so then the output is simply zero. And another important feature of this uh, neural neuron is the inhibition is absolute. The inhibition is absolute. So as we have considered, uh, so several inhibitory inputs we have considered. Several inhibitory inputs we have considered. So out of this, even if one is having the, or if one is active, out of this n inhibitory inputs. So here you see, here we have, here we have represented m excitatory inputs and n inhibitory inputs. So the neuron doesn't fire or the output doesn't get activated even if at least one of the inhibitory inputs is one. You need not require more than one. Even if one of the inhibitory inputs is one, inhibitory inputs is one, so the neuron doesn't fire. So the, that is the meaning of this inhibition is absolute. Even as if a single inhibitory input can prevent the neuron from firing irrespective of the number of excitatory inputs. These excitatory inputs, maybe all the excitatory inputs are high. All the excitatory inputs are active. So even if a single inhibitory input is present, so the neuron doesn't get fired. The neuron doesn't get fired. So this is the meaning of the uh, the inhibition is absolute. So this is the structure of the McCulloch-Pitts neural model. It is having M excitatory inputs. That means they are having the positive weights, positive weights, and N inhibitory inputs. Those have negative weights, and all the positive weights have the same value W, and all negative weights have the same value minus V. And the important point is interconnecting links unidirectional and it is having single output unit and the even if single inhibitory input is present so the neuron doesn't get fired so this is the important features of the mccullough pitts neural model right so we'll write the output for this so what is uh, this y underscore in how we can write y underscore in how we can write so there are total how many excitatory inputs are present m excitatory inputs are present and n inhibitory inputs are present so we can write it as summation i running from 1 to m 1 to m xi xi multiplied by w xi multiplied by w plus for inhibitor inputs, I am taking another variable j. This, this j will be running from m plus 1, right? j is running from m plus 1. If you remove here, it was represented from 1 to m plus 1. I am writing the summations separately for excitatory inputs and inhibitor outputs. So that's why for excitatory inputs, I have considered the variable i, i running from 1 to m, xi into w. For inhibitory inputs, I am considering the variable j. 
so it is running from m plus 1 up to n up to n and xi xi and the weight is minus v weight is minus v right so this again we can write it as summation i running from 1 to m so this w we can take outside because it is independent of the variable i so xi minus v summation j running from m plus 1 to n sorry here this should be j, xj xj right so y underscore out y underscore we can write it as function of y underscore in function of y underscore in is equal to this we can write it as it will be one binary function we are considering right so whenever y underscore in is greater than or equal to threshold so the output is one so zero otherwise zero otherwise right so zero otherwise so here theta is the threshold value theta is the threshold value so this is the relation between the output unit and the input unit so to ensure the absolute inhibition so this is the relation between the output and the input so to ensure absolute inhibition the condition that is required is the condition that is required is y underscore in is equal to w summation i running from 1 to m xi minus v xi minus v should be less than the threshold less than the threshold right so in this case the neuron doesn't fail so the summation w i running from 1 to m xi minus v so even if one input inhibitory input is present even one inhibitory input unit is present the neuron doesn't gets fired right so that is why so the summation is not required so in fact from this we can write so if all even if all excitatory inputs are present so then the summation is the xis are one so i running from 1 to m the summation will give you the value m w m minus v less than theta so this is the condition required for absolute inhibitory right so we can use this simple mccallum fitz neural model to perform conventional logic operations we can use this simple neuron model to perform to perform the conventional logic operation so what we have to do means simply we have to select the appropriate number of inputs appropriate number of inputs interconnection weights and appropriate activation function so these are the things we need to consider in order to uh, realize the conventional logic operation so we will see whatever we have studied in the digital electronics so one function at a time so by using the same mccullough fitz neural model so we can perform or we can implement this simple logical operation right if you like the video please share like and subscribe hit the bell icon to get latest video updates